Season 3, Episode 3. My daddy had a saying, don't trust the cook if you can't lick the spoon. <laughs> yes, I am Belfry Batsinger, and I want you to join me this evening on a tour inside Belfry's Bon Bon's Candy Factory. Come on in. Here in the kitchen, we about to make some brittle bone candy squares. But watch out now. Here come the molten sluice of caramelized frog bones. They gonna tumble right out in that cremation kettle and onto the ice cold embalming table. At this point, our highly trained confectioners, that's Apple Bob and Ring Toss, will score the candy with special razor blade gloves. Belfry. That's a tool now, not a toy. You better quit playing. Belfry. I said y'all quit playing. Now we're making our very popular fiendish fish. Our barracuda molds, replete with corn syrup and expectorant, will enter the morgue freezer, where they'll chill for a given moon. These recipes are a bat singer tradition, dating back to my great grandmama, a humble poison maker who had one small problem. That poison tasted too good. So she rubbed off them crossbones and sold it as candy. And that very same recipe survives today. Of course, we also try new recipes all the time. And I got something for Christmas that's gonna ring your grave bell right behind this door. No, hoss, we can't go in just yet. That's for Christmas. In the meantime, see a retailer near you for products like Grim Crackers, Tet's Taffy, Opera Scream Cake, Maple Mora Buns, uh, Googly Mooglies. Yeah. I said quit playing! Y'all in Cattle Holler. <laughs> Pumpkin, Pasta Munch will require seven boxes of brittle bone candy. Ooh, that's a lot. I would have only got four, but I need a treat because I had an upsetting experience at the porches now. Ah, don't tell us yet more blob creatures have poured from the slime pit under the gazebo. Yes, and they're wild, bless them. We've heard whispers from a few haunted customers, but little else. They was running so fast, I was worried they was going to fall down and skin their little knees. So I said, slow down. But then the oldest blob turned around and he made a rude noise. Then what happened? I said, I'm going to tell you, Daddy. But I can't, because Mr. Blob don't come to church. No, I expect not. Employees, are you working today? Yes, but Nita had an upsetting experience at the park. Jeff, enough with the video. I want to play it for them. Guys, you have to see this video. Nita had a bonkers moment on live television that everyone in the whole town... I am with the customer, Mr. Clearly. But I want to see the video. I'll be a witness. Oh, thanks. And play. I am here with Apple Bob, an employee of Belfry's Bon Bons at their new pop-up candy store in the park. We got some awesome flavors. 
I'm sorry, but are we really doing this? We're not gonna talk about the army of bloblings running all over this town? Uh, fun for the family. I don't care about ratings. There are little blobs running around with magic items that I know they're stealing because they stole my purse where I put my breakfast bar that I've been looking forward to all day because I ate all the gross flavors earlier this week. Uh, talking about flavor. Yeah, a uh, corn cob, whatever, doesn't matter. Rude! No, it doesn't matter, and I'm not doing this fluff piece. Yeah, I know about the vein in my head. And here's something else I do when I get mad. Oh, dear. That's my favorite part. I'm tired of this creeping news gig. So stupid, I used to do this for real, like... My other favorite part. Are you fired? No, the video's very popular. Don't worry, Bonita. They put another man on TV to yell at those mean slime boys. Oh, crap, he's right. Fuel chaos, ensnarled traffic, rampant robbery, gregarious destructive mayhem. No one in town could have seen this coming. There goes that vein. These hedonistic snotwads are expanding from the park to forcibly enter downtown businesses where they are presenting dubious coupons, making use of the toilets, and stealing magical items. My cars! And the store. They're already here, slavering over our enchanted wares. Pasta. It is too late for you. No! To leave, I mean. You stay here with me and Pumpkin. Help us defend the store until the threat has passed. I'll find some weapons. Chippenita, I am beyond irked by this blob fiasco. It must be resolved. Take the back exit and try your devil best to find out what is going on. All right, Nita, remember where we parked. I will, Chip, because you kind of ran over the police barricade and parked in the town square. The sheriff said I could. Plus, I have a cooler full of root beer in the back. Slime investigation is thirsty business. Yes, those are the tools of any well-appointed investigation unit. Well, if it ain't Bonita and Chipperoo, and my new right-hand man, Mr. Ice Cold Root Beer. Dang, if I don't hit the spot. Thank you. Well, Sheriff, what's the scoop? This town square is looking pretty lively. Well, we kind of keep it a head count of them little blobs, me and my helpers. Uh, right now I got a visual on ten blobs. Bones, Casey, and Terry report on the status of the ice cream parlor. We went inside to get bubble tea, but they were out of blueberry pearls. These old blobs got all the good flavors. Do you request backup securing the ice cream parlor? Over. What? No, it's fine. Whatever. The blobs are just, like, in line. Copy that, 10-4. Uh, so, Sheriff, why are Casey and Terry, the teenage troublemakers, part of your blob recon team? They got good heads on their shoulders. That Terry's gonna make a great junior deputy one of these days. Okay. Bones, the old man, his dog. Watch y'all's head count on the blobs on the north side of the big old ice cream cone. Over. Fourteen. <laughs> Goliath says fifteen. Thank you, ten four. Okay, so what are these blobs doing? It looks like most of them are just bouncing merrily up and down. Yeah, they bouncing merrily up and down for the most part on our public structures and facilities. But then there's them wild ones. Like the ones who are trying to break into Pumpkin's store. Yeah, yeah, they going after them magical items. Try to get my belt buckle, but I said, Back off, bud, you messing with the law. He blubbed away. Is, is your belt buckle magical? Well, yeah, it's also a, a cigarette lighter. I mean, I don't smoke, but... You know. And you shouldn't start. Smokers are jokers. Chip, calm down. I can't help it, Nita. I'm passionate about doing what's right. And justice. 
Say, Sheriff, have you tried to apprehend any of these bloblings? Well, now that's the funny part. I can't cuff them. Handcuffs just go right through them, you know. Can't hold on to them. They're kind of squishy. See, uh, uh, go on try to grab one there, Bonita. Uh, well, that's all over my hands now. Great. Hey, where'd you go? Well, now, that there is the most confounded part. Let me show you. Ooh, another slime pit. Nita, would you say this is similar to the one we saw at the dump? You know, the one that tentacle whooped Ronnie Roach in a bed to eat enchanted mattresses? Yes. Yes, I would. Does either of y'all got something uh, magical on your person? I want to show you something. Behold! A haunted pocket comb. Scares away cowlicks. Yank! Hey, he took my pocket comb. He ran it like a football into that slime patch. Yeah, that's what they've been doing. You know, they're taking the magic items and running with them and uh, disappearing into that slime patch. Hmm. Chip, do you think this patch is connected to the one at the dump? Maybe we should take a sample of this patch and try to compare it with some slime from the dump. Way ahead of you, Nita. Chip Science, clearly, already has this empty root beer can ready to be filled with our slime specimen. Very scientific, yes. Okay, well, where do we want to get the slime from? No worries, Nita. We'll just get all this slime stuck to the bottom of your shoe. Ew! you like to dress up for your dump visits, but the slime pit is off limits from here on out. Get it out your mind. But Ronnie, we just need one root beer of slime. Do you hear how crazy you sound? We're not crazy, we're scientists. And we need those slime molecules for our research into stopping blobs from blurping out of slime pits. Just get you a tart, like I did. All right, give us a minute. We have to think of a plan to trick you. Say what? Ronnie, completely unrelated question about garbage. Okay, but only if it's about garbage. Yep. And not about slime or slime pits. That's right. And uh, while we're talking, you don't mind if I sit on the hood of your disgusting old car, do you? No, that's all right. And it's okay if I prop up on my side like this and toss my hair into the fetid wind, right? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh, Ronnie. <laughs> okay. Come on, Nita. What's the question? Sure. Get a slime A from pit A while I distract A. Okay. That's French, right? Yeah. Ronnie, when did you fall in love with garbage? Well, when I was a little feller, I found an old Halloween pail, uh, like a Frankenstein head, but one of the neck bolts was missing. Really? I wonder why. Boy, get away from that slime! Chip, you ruined A my distraction A. I know, I got distracted. It's also interesting. I mean, bolts go on the neck, but if the pail is the head, then do you really need the bolts anyway? Well, now, you got a mind for garbage, boy. Nita, why don't you get A the slime A while I distract A? Okay, but if I get slime A on my dress A, I will kill A you A. Sorry, Ron A. Where were we? Uh, anyway, Franken Pail was my first real treasure. I put rocks in it, fingernails, feet. Found a foot one time. I can show you where it run off. But now you raise a good question as to whether Bolts is suited to the pail, and I'm of two minds about it. Okay, done. What's happening? Ronnie, can I have this comb? We have to go. From the mist, come before me, Quintus! 
Greetings, my summoner. It is I, Quintus Golpucifer, imp extraordinaire. Whoa, the store was never that popular. Reinforce the chain, Quintus. Hurry! That's better. The blobs are frenzied by our merchandise. Yeah, it, it, it's okay. They crave magic, Quintus. Have you any clue why? Sorry, Chief. Only blobs I know live up my nose. Well, your charge, Quintus, is to watch this door and alert me the moment anything goes awry. Relax, Chief. I got it. And for no charge at all, I'll make rude faces against the glass. And if it's a good crowd, I'll throw in my bottom, free of charge. Good man. Pumpkin, have you and the pastor chosen your weapons? This one got too many spikes. Try the Kato Nine Tails. It's reliable, balanced, and yields a satisfying snap. Like a candy bar. How do I look, Brother Pumpkin? Like a stove. Pasta, you're wearing the armor of St. Geran. It will protect you from ghosts, lycanthropes, and mosquitoes. That's wonderful. Unless it's the display model, in which case it will crumple like the skin of a mummy. I think it's the good one. I'm getting a text from Minerva. Seems she'll be on the news for her work with the Abacus. Shall we watch? I'd like to, if you're pointing toward the TV. Okay. And the Halloween parade appears tomorrow at dusk. Thank you, Putricia. Hard to believe Halloween is in two days. It really is. Of course, that also means it's been a year since the music box murders, in which real haunted housewife, Fibula Von Snap, tried to steal our souls with a sultry tune. Her trial before the council will remain a secret, but we all remember her parting words. I'll buy the jewelry for a song, baby. Enjoy the hat factory. And now for our top story. They came from the pitch. Blobs continue to burgle our magical relics and cause grief at the gazebo. We spoke with a park vendor who says blobs keep exchanging their neon souvenir necklaces when they become convinced that one color has more magic than another. My mistake was to allow the first trade, and now they won't stop asking. I told them no more. He had to commit to a color. The red one? This is the last time. I bet the red one's better. Me too. I would have got the red one. Speaking of power, the Abacus of Fate remains under guard at the library, where local brain Minerva Astralia is running calibration diagnostics. Oh, you, this memo. Cheers, darling. Pretty simple. You get a constellation, then you work first, outer, inner, last. Quintus, what's happening? We got a breach. A breach? How? Look, I do it. Okay? It was a good one, so I had to crack the door just a teensy bit and, you know, one of the slimes may have slimed through. There's a blob here now, in our store. Yeah, I mean, I don't. A blob ain't that dirty old bumblebee. Where is it now? Ladder peek a He's on my pambo. No, get him out. Master, run to the pentacle! I want to, but I can't see out of this stone! Pumpkin, use your weapon to guide the pastor toward the pentacle! This way, Peppo! He's following! Okay, we almost got it. Oh, we this way. Oh, we this way. Oh, we this way. Almost there! This way? Okay. Yes, Pasta. And now we have a prize. No prize. You want some cane?
Okay, we've paddled the swan boat across the piranha tank and pedaled the air bike past the killer bird bots. Now we have alighted gently onto the patio outside Henry Vex's laboratory. Yes, that was a very smooth descent. I could tell by all the screaming. I'm not sure if he'll love us dropping in. He's been kind of a recluse lately. You know, more than usual. Well, if it isn't Chip Clearly and Bonita Von Wangenkamp, I only answered the door because I thought you were my door gas driver, even though I requested no knock delivery. Hello, Mr. Vex, sir. I hope you don't mind our dropping in. We have some science type things we need to know. And we figured you're just the brain in a jar on an RC car for the job. Chip, it's not a good time. But I may let you win because I see that you brought me some root beer. Uh, actually, they're just root beer cans that contain samples of devouring slime. Even better! I can't resist a good slime. Let's go down to the lab. So, looking at the two samples, Vex, what can you tell us? And then it's my turn to look in the microscope. You can look now. You are indeed looking at two samples of the same cosmic slime. Cosmic slime? This slime is from outer space? Everything is from outer space, Bonita. Haven't you read this month's journal of interstellar particulates? No, I haven't, but let me guess. The new blob in town was this month's cover boy. Well, actually, they put me on the cover this time. But you're on the right track with your thinking. So, new blob is a cosmic slime? And so are the bloblings who keep running around town stealing magical artifacts? And so is the big patch of slime at the dump that eats mattresses? And so is the- Yes, Chip, all of the above. Well, it makes sense that the slime is from outer space. Look at how sparkly it is under the microscope. Chip, I can't look in the microscope as long as you are looking in the microscope. Your head is in my way. Okay, you get left eye. I keep right eye. I don't want left eye. I'm on the wrong side. This is dumb. I'll just take your word for it. Poor Benita. So busy being a go-getter that she forgets that the only thing worth getting is knowledge. Mm. Hey! Okay, here's maybe a dumb question, but how did cosmic slime get here? The slime has slithered in through small tears in the fabric of reality. Tears that I'm sorry to inform you were kind of your fault. Yeah, Nita. What did we do to create tears in the fabric of reality? Wait, was it the time travel? Time travel? R remember how we zooped around through time when the boogeyman was in town last Halloween? Huh? We went back in time and stole a playbook and back in the prehistoric past? No, oh, yeah. My time machine opened up some rifts. So we can't do any more time travel, ever. Oh, now I get why you've been laying low lately. You don't want anyone to find out about your little oopsie. Well, of course not. Creating cosmic rifts is a real jerk move. That's putting it mildly. So, recapping. We're dealing with a cosmic slime that is increasing in volume and zooping around town via small rifts in the fabric of reality. What in the world are we going to do? I'm not sure, Nita. But you know what helps me think? Bubble tea. Let's head back downtown. Bring me one! Sheriff's Blob Watch Log. The time is 1400 hours and the blobs are continuing their tater sack race in the town square. I have been informed via a text message from my old pal Chipperoo that the blobs are from outer space. Which I guess makes sense because they acting pretty wacky. Let's see uh, what else. Uh, tried some of that old bubble tea. Did not care for it. Now patrolling the perimeter of the ice cream cone and performing a visual check of the fry crystal. 
Long, this ain't good. I am detecting a thin layer of cosmic slime surrounding the whole of the giant ice cream cone and crystal. I don't know if it just appeared or if it was already there and we just hadn't seen it yet. Log, I believe I heard some blobby running its mouth inside our fried crystal. Bones to Casey and Terry, I'm gonna need y'all bring me a whole heck of a lot of crime scene tape. Over. Uh, can you not talk to us for a second? There's a cute blob in here. We aren't your old clatter bones! Bones, get ready to cordon you off a ice cream cone blob danger zone. <laughs> Albert! Albert! It's your friend and constituent, Chip Clearly, at the door. There's a pretty big deal we need to talk about. Shh. Well, come on in, Chip and Bonita. What's the emergency? Be right back. Well, one of them was that we refused to use the bathroom at Henry Vex's house because it's too weird, so would you excuse us both a moment? Go right ahead. I've just been discussing the lack of recent graduations with Mr. Thorne and Minerva here. Sounds great. We'll talk in a second. Sorry. It seems that others need your ear, Mr. Ghost. I shall take my leave. Please stay, Mr. Thorne. This has been a most fruitful and enjoyable discussion. Yeah, and we've executed some heavy calculations here trying to replicate the latest results from the Abacus of Fate. I really like your fractal math, Mr. Thorne. Can't beat a tree for fractals. Still, I do not wish to vow my branches over a road that is not mine to traverse. Your compatriots may desire a private discussion. Please stay. This administration is fully transparent. Like me when I'm not wearing my bandages and robe. Okay. Hi, guys. Mr. Tree, Minerva. Albert, I assume you got all of my frantic text messages about the blob. And I see a link to your Google Doc entitled New Blob Stuff Tell Albert. What's all this now? Okay, don't freak out, Minerva or Mr. Thorne. To catch you up to speed, basically we've just learned that the new blob is actually a cosmic slime and all his cosmic slime friends, which is all the same slime, are expanding into the town, stealing our magical artifacts, draining them of power, and then stashing them inside the giant ice cream cone in the town square. Yeah, because we went to the dump and that slime that we put in the root beer can was the same slime as the slime in the other root beer can from the town square. Oh, and we're not allowed to time travel anymore because that's how the slime got in. Time travel. Aha! Albert, new hypothesis. The time travel has altered the town's course in multiple ways. The slime, the graduations, it's all connected. I agree, Minerva, and I feel all staticky over it. I would like very much to confer with the Elsewhere Council on these matters, but contact with them is very sporadic and is almost always initiated by the council. Almost always? Well, how can we tell them to get their single-eyed butts over here and help us out? If we believe the situation is dire, I can perform an emergency hail to the council. I am not one to move quickly, Mr. Ghost. But perhaps the time has come for the council to be hailed. Okay, I just got a text from the sheriff who says the new blob in town is taunting him from inside the giant ice cream cone. This slime is causing too much trouble. Chip clearly is ready to do some handsome karate. You want to do karate at the blob? It doesn't have to be karate. We could do old-timey boxing. Chip, the blob can speak, thus it demonstrates intelligence. We must ask the cosmic slime what its intentions are. We will begin the process with diplomatic communication. Perfect. We'll do a rap battle. Chip, you don't know how to rap. Albert, come downtown with us. Maybe we should try to talk to the slime and see if it'll answer. That's a good idea, Benita. And if the slime cannot be reasoned with, then I will summon the Elsewhere Council. Yeah, tell them this, and the graduation stuff, and the abacus, and the time travel. Just throw a bunch of maggots at the wall and see what sticks. Ew. Monster Rumpers.
this time, Burpoo. Tell me, tell me, tell the... Blow, keep watching. Friends, what secrets have you extracted from our guest? What methods are proving persuasive? Well, we played hangman, splatagories, and hi ho scario. He ate my pieces. And we put on his favorite program, and he didn't tell us nothing yet, but he says if we do a good job on the pedicure. My credulous friends, these tactics will get us nowhere. A shame Quintus can't respawn until the morning. I would consult with him on a magic solution. If only I knew another who was properly trained in sorcery. I can do magic. Look, I removed my thumb. No! Pumpkin, who taught you this dark spell? The stinky man. Summon Simon, of course. Fallen wizard, schooled in the vexing arts. I wonder if Oblivion has taught him manners. Please! Any buffoon with even half a brain could earn the confidence of this gelatinous dullard! You think? But how, Simon? Hot irons? Guilt? I speak, of course, of the Rikshi Mini! No. I've read the text, but I thought it was a story. To sell spellbooks and the like. Oh, it's quite real, I assure you, and very popular among the Wizard Guild, who is still charging me, by the way, despite my compulsory servitude. You need to focus. We trying to save some candy here. I have performed the Rikshi Mini no less than three times, once successfully, to learn what someone said behind my back. That you smell? Irrelevant. You must ask yourself if you are prepared for the burden of forbidden knowledge. What about that pedicure? Choose your fate, Mr. Macab. This rite is profane, dangerous, and untested. I'm rather excited to begin. Okay, I dare you now. Hold still, creature. My callow pupils, have you learned the magic words? Even the slightest belch could twist your fragile minds into gravy. No, oh, but I don't know if I can say these words. Just sound it out if you're not sure. I am ready for the invocation. No, no, no I tell you. Brian Excoriano, Spasov Narim Tatim Evig. Brain to brain, heart to mind, leave no gossip behind. Word. Well? You gotta tell the secret. World's in ruin, jutting at broken angles from viscous oceans of slime, which stretch from horizon to endless horizon. Oh, goodness. And I have seen the slime's true form, its colossal gimlet eye turned to me briefly in recognition. <laughs> I want to see. Don't say any words again. It's dry. It's crazed, Mr. Macabre. If you wish to dispose of this vile thing, I know a very effective cantrip. No. Let him return to the slime. Let him tell Mr. Blob that we now know his real name. <laughs> Good evening, citizens of Colonel Holler. We interrupt the current broadcast with breaking news that is unfolding in the town square, where some of our most noteworthy citizens seek to talk with the blob. First, I'm going to ask Weekend Last Resort CHTV News Correspondent Benita Von Wengenkamp to give us the rundown on the happenings. Benita? Hi, Atherton. Now, normally this town square would be full of monster citizens buying bubble tea from the ice cream shop located next to the charming giant ice cream cone. But right now, the scene- Fascinating, Benita. Mm. I'm joined now by town caretaker, Albert Ghost. 
Good evening, Atherton. It has come to our attention that our newest citizen blob is actually a system of cosmic slime from outer space. We are now going to attempt to communicate with them. Can't take a ghost. What if the blob conversation goes horribly wrong and the cosmic slime sucks you into a gurgling abyss in front of a terrified home viewing audience? Then my sergeant at arms, Rochester McCobb, would act as caretaker in my absence and perform an emergency hail to the elsewhere council. I see. And what if the cosmic slime is nice and wants to be our friend? Then I'll give him this keychain with the town logo. Excellent plan, ghost. I'm sure one of those two things is bound to happen. Well, not necessarily. Back to you, Benita, who I see is now surrounded by various town characters who will one by one explain to us why this is a thing we should care about. Uh, yes, Atherton. I'm here with Chip Clearly, who I don't know why he's here in front of the camera, as I did not invite him to be. But as one of the town's friendliest and most impulsive citizens, Chip, I assume you are the one who will be attempting to talk to the cosmic slime. Hello, television viewers. I'm Chip Clearly, and I'm not just a handsome invisible car salesman. I'm also a handsome invisible first contact diplomat. Great, Chip. Thank you. Benita, I see you are also joined by Sheriff Bones Malone who is currently tiptoeing into the shot and mean mugging for the camera. Uh, yeah, I ain't here to do much, but I am providing our first contact diplomat, Chipperoo, here with a standard issue police megaphone. And rounding out the first contact team is town hero and philanthropist, Pumpkin. I'm here with my granddaddy who runs by store. And elderly zombie, Rochester Macabre who is skulking in the background so that I don't try to talk to him. Nice try, Macabre. What is your role in this kooky endeavor? I know the true name of the slime, the name by which it can be summoned. I obtained this knowledge via an intense and powerful mind meld that still threatens my grip on reality. That was going to be my first guess. After a brief commercial break, we're going to resume our live coverage of this blob debacle. Stay glued to your sets. Anita, you're clear. She was just going to start talking anyway. I was not. Okay, so is everybody ready? By which I mostly mean you, Chip. And Rochester, what is the true name of the cosmic slime? Squooflapalith, the devourer of stars. Ooh, Ooh, nice. Dang, that is an awesome name. Oh, it is not. He's trying way too hard. How are you supposed to spell superfluous? You don't spell it, Pumpkin. You sit helplessly while its madness slowly consumes you. Okay, okay, Roddy. Remember our rule. No doom talk when we're in the middle of a plan. Chip, are you... Ready as I'll ever be. Just give me a second to do my vocal warm-ups. Me, me, my, mo, moo. Me, me, my, mo, moo, me. Okay, Atherton's in my earpiece. He's telling you you gotta get the show on the road. Screw Flirpalith, the devourer of stars. Hey, pal, how you doing? My name is Chip Clearly, and I bid thee speak with us. Hey there, you tiny Ooh, I do not like this. Hold my hand. We are a peaceful town of pretty nice monsters, Wooflerpalith, and we like having visitors. Can you tell me how long do you plan to visit with us? I don't know. Eons, all consuming infinity. I see. And what are your plans while you're in town? Would you like to go on a tour of our belching hot springs? Or view our scenic mountainous crags? No, here to eat you and devour all in the whole town. Mr. Blob, sir, I don't think that would be a very good idea. You will love it. One of me will be Blob. You all Blob. Me? A part of a cosmic slime? I don't think so, bub. I challenge thee to a mind meld. 
Uh, Chip, what are you doing? That wasn't the plan. Mr. Clearly, please. This is far too dangerous. You don't know what perils await you. All I need to know is that Chip Clearly will never be a citizen of Slime Town. Mind meld! Mind meld, Swooflurpolith! Join me, little mind meld. The challenge makes up dead. What the crap is he doing? Rochester, we've got to do something! Yes, Benita. I am going with Albert right now. It is time to hail the Elsewhere Council. Whoa, where am I? This is a total slime zone. Bubbling pits, platforms, and a racetrack? Welcome, Blobinas and Blobulos, to the Slime Pit Raceway on Blobuful Slime Island! Our reigning champion, driving the banana peel on wheels, the flash of the car kingdom, with an unfair head start, it's Squooflurpolith, the devourer of stars! And our challenger, driving the slow and steady pile of steel on two high wheels, it's Chip Clearly! Hey, it's my monster truck! You'd better try to catch up, Challenger! Squooflurpolith is already lapping you! Pedal to the metal! Let's go! Chip, there is no way you're gonna win this race. Just catch up with the slime and bash his car! Benita, what are you doing in my mind meld race car? I'm not really here, Chip. I've been supplied by your mind. I represent the part of you that knows the right thing to do and is a real pain in the butt about it. Well, that makes sense. Monster Truck, activate Slowdown Slime! Activating! Now watch him hit that slime patch. <laughs> How do you like that? A taste of your own slimus in Swooflurpolith! Will you never catch me? Do what I want? Eat your cow? Hey! How did you get on the car radio? Oh, Benita, change the station to something better. Uh, not the one you like. Uh. Here we go. Say, I wonder why the mind meld has taken the form of a high-stakes car race on an island of blobs. Jim, can't you see? The mind meld dimension blends elements from your mind and the mind of the blob. The day class A atmosphere of a car race video game is a set piece from your tacky mind. And I suppose you came from my mind too, ratty old pal? That is correct, Chip. I represent the part of your mind that reflects frankly on unpleasant realities. Hey! <laughs> the slime's race car has turned into a boat and is now floating on the slime river. No fair! Wait a minute, I know. Monster truck, activate copter blades. We're gonna cut him off at the next pass. Activating. Copter. Blades. All right! Will you never catch me? Think again, Slimo! Monster Truck, activate landing gear! Activating! Ew! That landing hurt my bottom! Sorry, Pumpkin. I mean, sorry, Pumpkin from my mind. I represent solving your problems with hugs and kisses. Now there's an idea. Monster Truck, activate Giant Lips. Activating Giant Lips. Here's our slime. Hey now, what's this? Why are they kissing me? You're looking at a pair of Vexco Super Jumbo Wacky Kissing Prank Lips. They're blocking the whole road, and they won't stop kissing until they run out of batteries. Make them stop. They don't like No, just Listen to me, Squooflurpolith. 
In Colonel Holler, sometimes we get on each other's nerves, especially Bonita on my nerves. Chip, when real Bonita hears about this... But that's the fun of being separate people. We decide when to love, when to hate, when to forgive, and when to fight. You can't really do that when you're part of a system of slime that eats everything in its path. Can do. You can do. How about you bloop on out of here and go devour something else? No. No. No, leave. Just eat. Devour. But you'll think about it? Pour the water on it, pumpkin. Mom's away. Hey, why'd you do that? You've been in that mind meld for like an hour. We were thinking you were about to turn into a blob. No way. I think I've got him on the run. Hey, look. Him blobs is rolling away. Did I hear a bunch of bloblings just say they were going back to the dump? I love the dump. Okay, time to get you home. Pumpkin, go tell the sheriff to stop heckling blobs with the megaphone. We need him to clear a path. Let's stop at the drive through Hold on, I think I left my wallet in the mine meld. Ugh. There it is, Rochester. The precious fright crystal. Watch out for the sparks, Albert! The slime must have supercharged the crystal for its own mysterious purpose. Yes, with my inventory. If it's any consolation, at least we know there's enough power. Do you have the instructions? I had forgotten that this was written in Old Halloweenish, but I think I can manage. Ready when you are. Step one. Make sure you're on top of the correct ice cream tower. We can check that off the list. Step two. Confirm you have a true emergency. Seriously, do not contact the council unless it is absolutely necessary. What's step three? Produce the oversized council key. Insert the key with a trembling hand into the fright crystal chamber. Then turn it until you hear an ominous click. Now, gently turn the caliber to create ley line continuity with the council. There, now to calibrate ascension, declination, and liminality. I wonder how long it's been since we last contacted the council. A deck of ween at least, but I hope they respond with haste. Indeed. I can't tell what's happening on the ground exactly, but I fear the outcome of what appears to be a death race pantomime. Okay, what's next? The last step. We must be truly ready, Albert. Our fate is sealed after this moment. I'm ready. Then deliver the caretaker imprimatur. My name is Albert Ghost, and I approve this energy beam. That's it! We've done it, Albert! I hope the council hears our call in the desperate yet earnest spirit in which it was delivered. As do I. Hey look, you can change the colors. I prefer red. Yes, red is the best color. <laughs>